In this video, I'm going to go through the basics of moving around in Vim. If you're new to Vim, it can be quite difficult to get your head around the way things work, especially if you're used to using your mouse to get around your files. Moving from a more mouse-centric way of developing into a more keyboard-centric one is something that takes a little bit of time. Personally, I didn't even use the H, J, K, and L keys for a long time, and I just used the arrow keys. And then when I discovered that it would make much more sense to keep my hand on the home row, I would hold down H, J, K, and L to get around. And then I discovered the curly braces, for example. I became more efficient that way. Hopefully with a video like this, you can stop wasting time and start actually using the commands that are going to get you moving around more efficiently as soon as possible. One thing that I love about Vim is that every single Vim user I've met has had their own way of navigating and moving around. The first thing that I want to say is that everything we're going to be doing today in this tutorial is going to be in normal mode. We are not going to leave normal mode, we're not going to go into insert mode. I find that a lot of new Vim users will spend the majority of their time in insert mode. That's a really inefficient way of using Vim. So you want to spend the majority of your time in normal mode, which means when you press J, it's not going to type the letter J, it's actually going to move your cursor down. So make a note in the back of your mind to spend as little time in insert mode as possible. And hopefully with these commands I'm going to teach you today, it's going to be easier. If you can, I'd recommend firing up Vim in the background so that you can go through each one of these commands as I show you, and then you can decide which ones you like and which ones you don't. In this video, I'm gonna start off looking at large movements, and then we're gonna slowly move to more granular ones. So let's begin by looking at vertical movements. I tend to use Control U and Control D most of the time to scroll up and down through a file. Control D will move my viewports, which is what we're seeing here, lines 1 to 25 are what's in my viewport, even though the file is longer than that, will move the viewport down by half a page. So Control U for up and Control D for down. Really easy to remember, which is one of the great things about Vim. But what if you want to be a bit more granular than that? What if I just want to move from function to function? For that, I would recommend using the curly braces. The right curly brace will help you skip a paragraph. Essentially, it will go to the next empty line, and this allows you to easily jump between your functions. What you'll notice is when I get down to this class here, I have this console log, and in that console log, I've got a gap, a new line on line 69, and it will jump to that gap. So it's not doing anything particularly clever here, it's just finding blocks of text. So if I were to delete this line here, it would now not see that I've got two separate functions. In most cases when moving around functions, I find this to be all that I really need. But what if I want to get inside a function? So I know how to skip back and forth, but what if I want to get inside that function? For example, on line 18. At that point, it's probably good to break out the J and K keys. J will move your cursor down one row, and K will move your cursor up one row. The great thing is, like most commands in Vim, you can actually multiply these commands. So for example, 2J will move my cursor down two rows, and 2K will move my cursor up two rows. Similarly, if I change it to five, I'm going to start taking larger steps. Something else that I also do quite often is to use capital H, M, and L to move my cursor into different positions in the viewport. So H will take me to the highest point on my viewport, M will take me to the middle, and L will take me to the lowest point. But if I want to jump to the function at the very top, I'll typically just press capital H, and now I'm there. Or if I want to jump to hello function 2 down here, I can just press L. Or if I want to get to hello function on line 9, I can press M to get my cursor into the center of the viewport, and then press uh, 3K to get to line 10. Whilst we're still on the topic of vertical movement at a more page level, if you want to jump to the start of the file, pressing G twice will take you there. Likewise, if you want to jump to the end of the file, pressing capital G once will take you there. But what if I want to jump to a specific line number? Well, there are actually two ways of doing this. And the way that I was first taught and the way that most people teach is to type the number followed by capital G. So for example, if I want to jump to line 80 in this file, I'll type 80, capital G, and it'll take me there. However, you can also get there 
by typing colon the number and then enter. Sure, you have to type a couple more keystrokes, but you get to see what you're typing. So let me demonstrate here, a colon and then 100, enter, and my cursor is now on 100. You can't quite see here because the screen key thing's obfuscating it, but let's just wait for that to dissolve. And we can jump back to line 80 with the same thing, colon, 80, enter. 80 capital G is definitely more concise here, um, but it's up to you which one you prefer to use. For today, that's all I'm going to cover on vertical navigation. I'm now gonna move on to horizontal navigation. Commands that I use quite often are zero and dollar. Zero will take you to the start of a line, and a dollar will take you to the end of the line. And the dollar is quite easy to remember if you know regex, because dollar usually matches the end of a line. Likewise, you can actually use hat, and hat will take you to the first non white space character of the line as well. Personally, I just use zero W, find it just to be easier to type. In practice, if I'm going to add code to this line, I'll probably use capital I or capital A. Capital I will take you to the beginning of the line and put you into insert mode. Likewise, capital A will take you to the end of the line and put you into insert mode. So what is going on here when I type zero W? Zero takes me to the start of the line and W takes me to the next word. By pressing W, I can skip to the next word on the line. Likewise, I can press B for backwards to jump to the previous word, word and back. Pretty easy to remember. Again, I can multiply W and B, so I can press 5B to go back five words, or 6W uh, to go forward six words. Another command I use a lot is E, which means end, and it'll take me to the end of the next word. Whereas W takes me to the start of the next word, E takes me to the end. If I'm already at the start of a word, E will take me to the end of that particular word. Before anything else, I'd really get used to using W and B to move around horizontally, uh, as it's gonna save you a lot more time as opposed to just using uh, H and L, which is the next thing I'm gonna teach you. H and L. H will take your cursor left one, and L will take your cursor right one. H, J, K, and L is Vim's version of the arrow keys. To prevent myself from using arrow keys and to prevent you from using arrow keys, what I would really recommend is using the following four commands here and putting them into your Vim RC. This will completely disable the arrow keys, meaning that you won't be able to use them when you're trying to learn Vim. If you're overweight and you can't stop yourself from eating those delicious cookies, you need to throw out those cookies. And with these four lines, we're throwing out these delicious arrow keys so that you stop using them. You'll be thanking me when you shed those pounds. So add these four lines to your Vim RC and restart Vim so you're forced to use J, K, H, L, W, and B. With all the commands that I've just showed you right now, you're going to be able to move around relatively efficiently. So control U, control D, and then W, B, and maybe J, K, and L just to move a little bit more granularly to the specific character that you're looking for. You're going to be able to move relatively decently, but we can do better than this. We can use searching. When it comes to searching, let's start by looking at a single line. What if I want to change what's inside this console log? Well, I can do this in a number of ways. One way is to use F. So F means find on this particular line. So if I press F and double quotes, it will jump to the first occurrence of double quotes. If I press semicolon, it'll jump to the next one. Comma will send me back to the previous one. Capital F C will take me to C in console. F double quotes will take me to that double quotes. However, T, double quote, will take me to the bracket just before it. This is quite useful. For example, if I want to delete up to the bracket, I might type D, T, open bracket to delete everything up to that open bracket. Vim has a very intuitive and powerful search mechanism. By simply pressing slash, I can now type in a search term. You'll see that whilst I'm typing the search term, anything that matches it in the file will start to highlight. When I press enter, it'll take me to that first highlighted section. I recommend adding uh, these few lines to your VimRC. So set ink search, which enables inclusive search, which means that as I start typing, it's going to start highlighting anything that matches it. 
and then to set no HL search. No HL search means that when I press enter, it won't highlight the search term that I've just searched for. This no remap, control H, set HL, exclamation mark, gives me the option to toggle whether I should show what I've just searched for, which I personally find really useful. So by default, it won't show what I've just searched for, and I can press control H to show all things that match it. If I search for N remap now, it will show me the first thing that matches, and when I press enter, it will jump to it. But if I press control H, it will show me every single match in this viewport. Adding this NNO remap into your VimRC is gonna give you that shortcut. Now that I've shown you that you can search forward using slash, you can actually search backwards using question mark. So it's essentially the same thing, except you're searching in the different direction. For example, slash will show me the first thing that matches it ahead of the cursor, and question mark will show me the first thing that matches it before the cursor. If I type slash and search for foo, for example, and then press enter, and I want to jump to the next occurrence of foo, I can simply type n for next, take me to the next occurrence, and capital N to go backwards. If you're using the question mark to search backwards, then n's going to take you to the previous occurrence. Quite often, I'll jump to a part of the file by typing slash, and then my search term until it highlights, and then press enter. But what about an example like this? If I want to jump to line 55, where foo is inside the quotes, how do I do that? Type slash, and then foo, you'll see that it actually highlights the instance on line 51, which isn't the one that I care about. However, if I press quotes, it's going to match the next one. So I tend to just keep typing until it matches the one that I'm looking for, and then I press enter. But sometimes you don't have that luxury, in which case you're just gonna have to press N until you get to the one that you're looking for. So there we have it, the basics of moving around in Vim. Quite a lot of information here. Feel free to rewatch the video and try out these commands whilst you're watching it. If you can think of any great commands that I haven't covered here that I should have done, let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear from you. If you like the kind of content I'm covering here, press that subscribe button with the bell icon and I'll let you know when the next video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.